Hello. We are very much looking forward to talking about the inguinal ligament today. We're going to talk about the inguinal ligament. It's a ligament down here that comes up all the time, so it's a major anatomical landmark. It's very important structurally, but we never really give it that much time. It's also called Poupart's ligament. I have never ever called it Poupart's ligament, but we always call it the inguinal ligament. So we'll have a look, see where it is, what it's made of, why it's there, and what its job is, and then we will think about, okay, how does the inguinal ligament relate to the inguinal canal? How does it relate to the femoral canal? How does it relate to the femoral triangle? And what passes deep to the inguinal ligament? That's what we're gonna do. All right then, where is the inguinal ligament? I'm gonna make it out of tape. Should be long enough. The inguinal ligament runs from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle. <laughs> it's way too long. That's it, that's the inguinal ligament. All right, so this is the ilium, this big flat curved bone of the pelvis. This is the iliac crest. You can palpate the iliac crest. And if you work along anteriorly and you find the bony anterior pointy bit, that's the anterior superior iliac spine, commonly abbreviated to ACIS. I don't like abbreviations because it slows down learning. Um, anterior superior iliac spine, and then it runs from there straight along to, this is the pubis bone. Again, you can palpate the pubis bone. It's very low and there is a tubercle, a lumpy bit. Now, if we have lumpy bits on bones, it usually means something attaches there because the connective tissue in the bone interact to form a good connection. So that's the pubic tubercle. So this is the inguinal ligament. Hey, look, if I rotate this, you can see that there is now a gap between the bone and the inguinal ligament. So this is like a channel between the pelvis or the torso as a whole and the lower limb. So that's an important idea. Okay, so, can you, right, you find your anterior superior iliac spine, can you palpate your inguinal ligament? It's not super clear, there seems to be a lot of stuff here. So what stuff is there here? If I wheel in wee man here, you can see what's going on. Look, we've got these muscular walls here of the abdomen forming the trunk, forming the torso, forming the walls that keep everything inside, the abdominal contents and the pelvic contents. And down here is the inguinal ligament. So this muscle is continuous with the inguinal ligament, although there's more to it than that. This muscle here, this is the external oblique muscle. And it's one of the muscles, there are three layers of muscles here that's coming around and, and forming this wall. We've talked about this elsewhere if you're interested. But look, its inferior edge is down here. This is where the muscle ends, and it does. Um, so what's happening here is that the external oblique muscle, where it's going white here and down here, it's forming an aponeurosis, it's like a flat tendon. And this is part of the structure that's holding everything together. So the inguinal ligament is like the inferior edge of the external oblique muscle, the aponeurosis, it's the bottom edge of that muscle running from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle, giving it a base, right? Now what we can't see is that there's a thick, deep fascia covering the muscles of the lower limb, and this also runs up to the inguinal ligament and kind of blends with it. So the inguinal ligament is like a it's like a line, a boundary. It's like a meeting of the fascia, the deep fascia of the lower limb and the muscles of the abdominal wall. The inguinal ligament then anchors the external oblique muscle. And because of the way these muscles are all interrelated and tied together and work together, it anchors on both sides the muscles of the abdominal wall and it anchors the fascia lata and through that gap that we saw deep to the inguinal ligament, it provides a route for blood vessels, nerves, lymphatics, and muscles to pass between the 
abdominopelvic cavity, the torso, and the lower limb. Here's the inguinal ligament again. Here's the ilium, iliac crest, anterior superior iliac spine. There's the inguinal ligament. This is the, the tubercle here, the pubic tubercle of the pubis bone pubis bone, pubic tubercle, inguinal ligament. And we see kind of at this end here, at the medial end, kind of a reinforcement of its attachment as the uh, lacuna ligament. Okay then, here's the abdominal cavity, small intestines in there, the lower limb is down here, and the inguinal ligament is running across here. All right, so what's the inguinal canal then? Well, the inguinal canal is, um, it's a tube, it's a canal running through the abdominal wall muscles. Um, and that's what we're seeing here. The scrotum is here and the inguinal canal connects the contents of the scrotum with the inside of the torso of the pelvis and the abdomen. So it goes through the abdominal wall. Now the inguinal ligament forms the floor of the inguinal canal. That tube is made up of a number of different layers of things coming together. But the inguinal canal is separate from the inguinal ligament. It's more than just the inguinal ligament. All right. What about the femoral canal? The femoral canal is the tube, the canal, the space that's deep to the inguinal ligament. So the inguinal canal is running superior to the inguinal ligament. The femoral canal is running deep to the inguinal ligament. And the femoral canal then is linking the lower limb with the pelvis. Here is a model of the lower limb. This is the left leg. Here's the inguinal ligament, pubic tubercle, anterior superior iliac spine, and these blood vessels and this nerve are running deep to it and passing into the lower limb. So the femoral canal is deep to the inguinal ligament. What about the femoral triangle then. Well, this is the femoral triangle. The femoral triangle describes this space here. And in three dimensions, it has a floor, so the muscles deep to it, and it has a roof. But the triangle is made up of the inguinal ligament, the sartorius muscle here, and the adductor longus muscle here. So the femoral triangle then is receiving the blood vessels and the nerves uh, and the lymphatics and other bits and bobs, if you like. These are the femoral vein, artery and nerve. Funnily enough, we use the inguinal ligament as a landmark to change the name of the femoral artery and the femoral vein. The femoral nerve is just, it's just femoral nerve the whole way. But this here is the, or is, it, is it divided? So common iliac artery, and it divides to give off the internal iliac artery here. The external iliac artery runs to the inguinal ligament and when it passes deep to the inguinal ligament, we change its name and call it the femoral artery. Same with the femoral vein. Femoral vein, if you think of the direction of blood flow, is flowing in this direction. And as it passes deep to the inguinal ligament, we change its name and it becomes the external iliac vein femoral triangle, femoral canal, inguinal canal. All right then, what structures pass deep to the inguinal ligament? Well, we've seen some already. The femoral nerve, artery and vein. Femoral nerve, external iliac artery, external iliac vein. And um, lymphatics. So lymphatic vessels and uh, lymph nodes are passing deep to the inguinal ligament to pass from the lower limb and the groin back into the pelvis. The lateral cutaneous nerve of the thigh, a little bit specific, but it's, it's working its way out to carry sensory innovation from the lateral skin of the thigh. That happens to pass 
deep to this. And then a whole bunch of muscles. Now we can see that psoas major, this big chunky muscle here. Psoas major is a muscle running from the posterior abdominal wall, from the lumbar vertebrae down to the femur. It is the major hip flexor. Psoas major and then iliacus. So the wing of the ilium here, the iliacus muscle attaches to that and runs down with the tendon of psoas major, so much that they often get combined together and talked about as iliopsoas. Iliacus also passes deep to the inguinal ligament to insert into the femur and can flex the, the thigh at the hip. Um, pectineus is a, um, it's a small adductor muscle of the thigh that is bringing the leg back into the midline. Um, and, and that's it. So a bunch of muscles forming the floor, important neurovascular stuff and lymphatics pass deep to the inguinal ligament. So that's the anatomy of the inguinal ligament. It's one of those things that just comes up all the time when you're in this region. It just seems to relate to everything. But the inguinal ligament, don't mix it up with the inguinal canal, although it is associated. Don't mix it up with the femoral canal, although it is associated. Don't mix it up with the femoral triangle, although it is associated. You see what I mean? It comes up everywhere. But that's the anatomy of the inguinal ligament. All right. Whew. Well, well it's, um, it's Christmas in a couple of weeks, so I'm taking a couple of weeks off. No anatomy videos until um, January. So I will see you um, in January. Dating the video a bit there, but whatever. Mm -hmm.